Well, hi everyone, uh, it's Tim Topham here, and I'm here today with the Kawhi Novus NV10. Uh, and that, by the way, was a piece of music by the fantastic Justin Levitt uh, from the United States. Um, that was piece number three in his little set of three called Mr. Bark's Wig. A uh, great piece of music, very uh, channeling a bit of Beethoven, channeling a bit of oh, everyone in that. Um, anyway, look, I wanted to play that because uh, it just encapsulates, I guess, the um, the pleasure I've had in exploring this instrument over the last couple of weeks in my studio here in Melbourne. And uh, what I wanted to do today was just give you a quick overview of uh, the Novus uh, and how it kind of fits into the hybrid piano range and, and some thoughts on it as well. Um, and so it was really interesting when Kawhi came out with this. Um, Yamaha have obviously had the Avant Grand. They were the first to come out with the hybrid pianos, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and they've been out for many, many years. Um, and then Casio came out uh, a couple of years ago with the Grand Hybrid, and you can see my other reviews on that. I'm a big fan of the Casio Grand Hybrid. Uh, and now Kawhi has uh, joined the party and come out with their own hybrid piano. And this is the uh, NV10, which is the only one in their series at the moment. Uh, and what they've done is they, they've, they've pitched it pretty much right at the Yamaha Avant Grand N1 uh, range, as far as price-wise goes anyway. Uh, this one retails for about 12000 or thereabouts. This is Australian dollars. Uh, sorry, uh, 15,000 Australian dollars, the N1's 12 or 13 from Yamaha. So they're going pretty much head to head, I feel, in that category. It's also got a very similar shape, you can see. It's got that deep, uh, deeper profile, uh, and I'll show you underneath and some of the other connectivity in a moment. Um, but I think that's that's kind of the, the area of the market they're trying to capture. I think Casio is still with their um, their grand hybrids retailing for about five or six thousand dollars. I think they still have a fantastic part of the market for those who um, aren't ready to spend uh, over ten grand on an instrument yet. Uh, but now, if you're interested in the Yamahas, you've now got Kawhi as a very, very strong competitor here, and I've thoroughly enjoyed playing this over the last couple of weeks in my studio, as have my students, uh, adults and children alike. Um, they've all been very impressed. Um, now, I think the first thing you notice about this instrument, well, one is that it looks really stylish, uh, and I'll show you underneath. It's got kind of an open uh, back feel, and there's a three pedal block, just like on the grand pianos. The other first thing you'll notice is that there is here all your controls, but most importantly, and the thing that I think Kawhi has done, which all the other manufacturers should have done years ago, is they put a full color touch screen in there. So let me show you that now. Okay, so here's a look at the actual instrument. So it's got a deeper profile, certainly, than the, the Casio, but again, very similar to the N1 from Yamaha. Uh, and if you have a look underneath, you've got a very different look to what the other instruments have. So it's actually got this, um, this kind of standalone uh, pedal system, which has actually got speakers in it as well. Uh, and I think it actually you know, gives a real element of style um, compared to some of the other options. Uh, now, while I'm under here, I might as well grovel on the floor and show you um, where they've very cleverly put all the connections. And as you can see, all your MIDI and USB and all that kind of stuff is right here, actually facing forward. How clever is that? I don't know why it's taken people so long to realize that that's actually the best place to put things. So you've got uh, multiple lines in, you've got USB, um, and you've got MIDI. Now, the other great thing they've put right at the front and very easy to access is here, uh, your even more handy controls. So you've got your headphone, your volume control, and your on-off button, and you've also got a USB if you want to do some quick recording. And that's literally right underneath the keyboard, but you can't actually see it until you have a look down. But I found this a great placement for this. Some um, manufacturers put headphone sockets in the most weird positions. This makes perfect sense. Very easy to find and very easy to use. Now, let me show you what I'm most excited about, and that is this which is the full color touchscreen control. Now, as many of you will know, um, really, I mean, the, the amount of options you get in a hybrid or digital piano these days are pretty much limitless because the price of technology is coming down. They can pretty much put anything in there. The constraint is always how easy is it to actually use? Well, these guys have completely solved this problem by making it, uh, I assume this is some kind of phone in here. I, I don't actually know if it's actually custom designed, but literally you can swipe through. These are three different types of the, um, the Shigeru Kawai. You can also uh, click, we can, um, 
let's actually let's go down the bottom so you've got um, sound you've got music and you've got favorites so it's very easy to add things to your favorites so I've got a, you know, a kind of pop piano sound here which I'll show you the actual sound of it later on um, I've turned off damper noise for example on one just as a test of their uh, virtual technician settings um, and another one there's another great setting there for instruments that are up against a wall for example so that's all nice and easy to get to uh, back to the piano here let's um, go into um, the settings and you can see here uh, you've, you've instantly got a number of things at your uh, at your command but the virtual technician I think is really really interesting because it just makes changing settings so easy so for example you can just change easily the damper noise uh, the hammer delay the touch um, the effect of the pedal and you can then store those settings uh, if you wish uh, oops I just changed that that's okay uh, you've also, I mean, you've, you've got every setting possible under the sun. You've got your MIDI settings, uh, your, you know, contrast, auto power off. This screen can, by the way, automatically turn off when you uh, start playing the instrument if you prefer not to have it showing up. Uh, it does have Bluetooth as well, which is great for teachers or students who are using something like Piano Marvel or some of those apps that have Bluetooth connectivity so they don't have to connect with cables all the time, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, so we've got these, so these are all multiple types of the SKEX uh, piano, you can just flip through and you can just play and have a listen to, um, to how they sound as you go. Uh, let's click on the sound now, so this is now where we can actually choose what instruments we want, um, so for example this is the Shigeru Kawai, uh, they've got all their different <laughs> different kinds of um, grand pianos and they all have subtle different flavors and of course you can alter these as much as you want to you've got obviously electric pianos and harpsichord you've got organs um, oh, you know Oh, choir, there you go. So if you did want to do things with other instruments and create um, arrangements or connect it with MIDI and, and use the sounds in the instrument, you can certainly do that. Uh, I think these are less important on uh, digital hybrids like this because most people are buying these instruments, in my opinion anyway, as a replacement for an acoustic piano if you've got issues of space or cost or uh, whatever it is. So uh, I really have been just exploring the various concert grands. Um, I did like the, there was just a, war, I think the warm grand or the standard grand. I actually quite liked some of their standard instruments and the sounds that they were making. Uh, you can see here you can um, split the keyboard, you can do forehand playing, uh, dual playing and that will split the, uh, the headphones, that kind of thing. You've got quick and easy access to a recorder, pretty much just press go when you're ready uh, and there's a metronome right inbuilt there if you need it. Um, for music, you can obviously access demo songs, there's lesson songs, uh, concert magic. I mean, I, I haven't even really started exploring this um, because my first priority with a new instrument like this is how does it sound and most importantly, how does it feel to play and how is it to use technically, i.e. this kind of touch screen and things like that. So if you want to know more about Concert Magic and, and some of these other features, then I'm sure there'll be some other reviews online. But looking at it from a piano teacher perspective, I'm really looking at the ease of use, the sound and the touch. Um, and then I mentioned my favorites as well. So that's a little overview of uh, the touch screen. I, I, I just think this, I don't know why other manufacturers haven't done this. I'm pretty sure they will now. I think that is the best innovation in this instrument. Um, and looking up at the top, you've got uh, a number of speakers uh, in, in the top panel. And if I go over the back, you can see more, uh, more speakers as well. Uh, it's got a great music rest. I've very much enjoyed uh, the size of the music rest. It's, uh, it's also adjustable, you can see, um, at the back. So very much, very comfortable to use. Uh, the, the music really stays um, in a good position and um, very, very convenient, comfortable to play. All right, let's flip back to the other camera. So as I've said, I've really enjoyed playing it. it the, the response of the keyboard is really uh, so, so authentic. It's, it's got, the, the, I mean, you can adjust, of course, every setting in here, but the, the, the brilliance of the touch at the top, but the, the real rich and warmth of the bass, I think is just absolutely stunning on this instrument. And I think what Kawhi has done really well in this is they've worked on the sound, the soundscape that's created when you're playing. 
Sometimes with hybrid pianos, the uh, the sound reinforcement is the thing that's lacking. There's just not enough speakers to give that real sense of a big instrument that you're playing. Kawhi has completely solved that. And I'll tell you the other thing that I think is really outstanding with this instrument, and I'm not entirely sure how they've done it. You really get a sense of the feedback coming to you through the keys from the sound. And I think it's because of the size of the speakers and the vibrations. Uh, but you, you actually feel like if you were playing a real acoustic grand piano, you get some sense back through your fingers that you're playing something that's kind of alive and moving and, and, and working. And, and you get that with this instrument. I haven't had that experience before. Uh, so if you are playing... Um, this tactility, this, this response, uh, it's the only way I can put it, of the sound and the vibrations coming back to you. You really have to try it to actually see what I mean, but it's quite phenomenal. The other thing that they've done, which I don't actually understand all the technology behind, is they have added, and they're the first people to do this, a full damper action inside the acoustic action inside the instrument. So normally with a hybrid piano, in my limited understanding, they take the key mechanism and they duplicate that, that's what's inside here. They really just take out the strings, but they also remove the damper action. Kawhi said actually the dampers have a significant effect on the feeling and the touch, particularly when you press the pedal and on a grand piano, all the dampers lift off the string. Um, for those who are specialized enough, they can actually notice that there's a different feeling there. Uh, and so they've actually integrated that into this instrument. Whether I can tell that sort of level of definition in you know the different feeling of when I put the damper pedal down and when I haven't and where the dampers are in relation to the, the you know, strings in inverted commas, uh, I'm not too sure about. But I have a feeling that might be one of the other things that is contributing to me feeling the realism of this instrument and getting that sensory uh, tactile feedback back as I play which is incredibly satisfying. So it's not at all like a digital instrument, and I've read plenty of reviews online from top concert pianists who say, actually, they, there is nothing telling this apart. If they had a blindfold on and they were put in front of this instrument, they actually couldn't tell that they weren't playing an acoustic grand piano. So I think that is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, like any grand um, acoustic, uh, sorry, any hybrid piano, putting headphones on is an unbelievably um, good experience. I've really enjoyed practicing this instrument with headphones. I think having the ability to wear headphones is one of the great advantages, of course, of a hybrid piano. Um, but I tell you what, when you actually do put the headphones on, you are, you are immersed in sound. It's, it is incredible and it sounds great. So can I recommend that if you do go to a store and try any hybrid piano, pop headphones on and compare the sound output live versus what you get with the headphones. And depending on how you do most of your practice, I actually tend to do most of my practice with headphones, so it actually suits me really well. Uh, the other setting that they have is a wall sound setting, uh, which the other instruments I, I haven't come across have this. So with one click there, you can say, yep, I've actually got this um, the Kawhi up against a wall, and it will change the response in the sound slightly to suit that environment. Uh, so what else have we got? Um, I, I mentioned Bluetooth, uh, the, uh, obviously lot, lots of sounds, uh, many of which I haven't explored in full detail. Uh, but what I really, I think, I, the, the top things, if I could summarize my experience with this um, uh, instrument, the touch screen and the ease of use, Kawaii, you get 11 out of 10 for that. Like that, that it's, it just makes so much sense. Some of the complex, ways that other instrument manufacturers make you choose settings by kind of holding down a button over here and one with your foot over here and trying to press three keys at the same time and that changes your setting. I mean, forget it. Who's not going to actually do that? So well done, Kawhi, for that. I think that is superb. Um, I love the look of the instrument. I think it's great. Do keep in mind that it, it does have a bigger depth. So depending on your studio, I've got quite a small studio space here, so it has taken up a little bit more room than say the Casio, which has a much smaller profile. Uh, so keep that in mind, but it does look, I mean, it looks pretty sexy. It's a great looking instrument. Really good work with the music rest, 
the functionality of all the plugs and the buttons, but look, absolutely overall is this response and the touch and the sound that you get uh, back from the instrument. Uh, as I say, you just, you have to go and play it to understand it, but really, I think Sound, I mean, my camera speaker will never pick up all the nuance in the sound. The sound of me moving the dampers on and off the strings, um, the, the great, the rich bass tones as well. And that's just on the, uh, the classic one here. That's on a more full sounded piano. If I go to the pop sounds, uh, we've got this. If, you, if you're into those kinds of things, you know, this, it's got that brighter, slightly more percussive sound. Okay, it's really quite bright in this little room. Um, and the camera, again, it's probably not doing it justice, but geez, it's got some really fabulous sounds to it. Um, and I think you'll, you'll do, I mean, you, you really can't go past the Shigeru Kawai sound, which is the kind of the fault in there. It's just rich, and as I say, it just you get this sense of feedback from it, which is just unlike anything I've come across before. Uh, it's got a full, uh, full size full board as well. So if you are doing teaching, where you often use the the top, this can be a whole lot easier than um, some other manufacturers who have concertina ring style um, arrangements. With that, again, it's a space issue. They've got a bit more room to do things in this. Uh, so there you go. I hope that was helpful. Uh, definitely go and check out. This is the Novus NV10. Uh, it is. A really phenomenal instrument. I can't um, can't say it any more than that. Uh, for the price range, again, I think they've really they've hit right on whereabouts the Yamaha Avant Grand series begins. So at about that uh, twelve to fifteen grand kind of mark. I think still, if you're um, someone with a smaller studio and with a smaller budget, then I still love the Casio uh, Grand Hybrid. I think they're fantastic for their level. I think this is definitely going to compete head on with the Avant Grand. And then of course, if you've got uh, 25K or thereabouts, the Yamaha have got their N3, which is their kind of semi uh, baby grand style grand hybrid. Um, so there you go. I really hope that's helpful. If you've got any questions at all, then please just leave a message under the video and uh, or get in touch with me online at timtopham.com. Thanks everyone, see ya.